Good afternoon, class. We are looking at chapter four, exponential and logarithmic functions. Here's 4.3 logarithmic functions and 4.4 graphs of logarithmic functions. So we covered the exponential functions, graphs of exponential functions, and now we are going to deal with logs and their graphs. The objective is convert from logarithmic to exponential form, convert from exponential to logarithmic form, evaluate the logs, use common logs, natural logs, identify the domain of a log, graph, logarithmic functions. Recall when we looked at exponential functions, A can't be one and A must be larger than zero. What happens when A is equal to one? When A is equal to one, we get a horizontal line. When A equals to one, we do not have a, an exponential function. When A is between zero and one, so f of x is a to the power of x, a is positive and a is not one. Then we have a exponential decay. When it's larger than one, we have exponential growth. And these are exponential rules that we should be very comfortable. Both cases, horizontal asymptote is the x-axis or y equal to zero. There is no vertical asymptote. Y-intercept happens at zero, one. There is no x-intercept. Domain is our real numbers, range from zero to infinity. So far, the same. However, the difference is when A is larger than one is increasing, you have an exponential growth, in which case limit of f of x as x approaches infinity is infinity. That means the first quadrant. And limit of f of x as x approaches minus infinity is zero. That is the definition of a horizontal asymptote. When A is between zero and one in this case, it's a decreasing function, an exponential decay, where limit of f of x as x approaches infinity is zero, the definition of a horizontal asymptote, and the limit of f of x as x approaches minus infinity is infinity. Four point three logarithmic functions, four point four graphs of logarithmic functions, definition logarithms. Consider f of x equals 2 to the power of x. Can a formula for f inverse be found? We change f of x to wall because it makes it easier, 2 to the power of x. We interchange x and we write x equals 2 to the power of wall. That's how you find the inverse. And then you get to solve for wall and you call it f inverse. Now, Therefore, f inverse of x equals y is the exponent to which we must raise 2 to get x, according to this symbol. Let us define a new symbol to replace the words the exponent to which we must raise 2 to get x, and it's log, and we call it log x base 2. So the log base 2 of x, that's another way of writing it, or log base 2 of x means the exponent to which we raise 2 to get x. Thus, if f of x is 2 to the power of x, f inverse of x is log x base 2. Note that f inverse of 8 is log 8, log 8 base 2 equals 3, because 2 cubed is 8, because 3 is the exponent to which we raise 2 to get 8. So 2 cubed equals 8. Log 8 base 2 must be 3. So that's the definition. Now, conversion from exponential format to logarithmic format. Notice this is the exponential format. This is a logarithmic format. They both have the same exponent, the same base. And so the best course of action to pay attention to the arrow that I'm going to give you, b to the power of y equals x. For x larger than 0 and a larger than 0 and a can't be 1, 
The expression log x base a is read the logarithm of x to the base a or simply log base a of x. Somehow you have to mention base with uh, a if you will here. In this case, you have to mention base b. Write in logarithmic form. Pay attention to this. 7 to the power of x is 15. That means log of 15 when the base is 7 must be x. Pi cubed equals m. That means log m base pi must be 3. x to the power of 5 equals 12. That means log of 12 with base x must be the exponent 5. <laughs> Write in exponential form. Just follow the arrow. 3 to the power of 4 is x. x squared is 5. 3 to the power of x is 8. It's a very straightforward, everybody. <laughs> Graph logarithmic functions. Graph y equals log x base 2 for any real number, a larger than 0. a can't be 1. And x is positive, y equals f of x log x base a is a logarithmic function. So the base must be positive and it can't be 1, just like the exponential format. x is called the argument of log. X is called the argument of log must be positive. So how do we graph this? We are going to rewrite this as X equals 2 to the power of Y following this format. And I hope you recognize that it's easier to pick y. So let us pick the value of y. For example, if y is negative 4, 2 to the power of negative 4, that means 1 over 16. Negative 3, 2 to the power of negative 3, 1 over 8. Negative 2, 2 to the power of negative 2 is 1 4, 2 to the power of negative 1 is 1 half. 2 to the power of 0 is 1, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8, 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So I hope you see why it's easier to pick the exponent. <laughs> and so you have a bunch of pairs. If you carefully graph them, they look something like this. In fact, when the base is larger than one, it looks like this. I hope you remember with the exponential format, the same thing. When a is larger than one, meaning two, three, four, five, and they're almost the same. The larger the base, the smaller the result, the closer to the x-axis, okay? What do we notice? You have the x-intercept at one, zero. We don't have a y-intercept. The domain is from 0 to infinity. y is the vertical asymptote, which gives us the equation x equals 0. 
range, there is no restriction or real numbers, and that's an increasing function. So x intercept one zero, y intercept none, domain zero to infinity, range minus infinity to infinity, vertical asymptote, the y axis x equal to zero, it's an increasing function. It is extremely important that we remember this graph is the basic function. And as long as we know the graph, we can do any transformation if need be. Compare the graphs of exponential and logarithmic functions. We have done the exponential and now we did the logs. Again, this happens when A is larger than one. Y equals A to the power of X and Y equals log X base A are inverse functions for A larger than one. Their graphs are symmetric about the line y equals x, okay? So that's pretty straightforward, everybody. Remember when we dealt with the exponential functions, there was no x-intercept. The y-intercept as at zero, one domain, look at the blue, function, no restriction or real numbers, range zero to infinity. We have a horizontal asymptote, which is the x-axis and x-axis has the equation y equals zero. This is an increasing function. Now what happens to the log? Okay. X-intercept and y-intercept, they interchange. So the x-intercept becomes one zero and the y-intercept doesn't exist. Domain is all real numbers, now range are real numbers because they're inverse functions. Range is from zero to infinity, domain becomes zero to infinity. We have a horizontal asymptote, the x-axis, now we have a vertical asymptote, the y-axis, which has the equation x equal to zero. Both of them are increasing functions. So A is larger than one. What happens if we go with A bit, let me just erase it. What if A is between zero and one. So you remember this becomes a graph of a y equals a to the power of x, where a is between zero and one, right? And for the log, use a different color, let me use a different color. Maybe this one. Looks like that. So 
this would be the graph of y equals log x base a, where a is between 0 and 1. So this would be the graph of an exponential function. This would be the graph of a logarithmic function. Again, they are inverse functions. All right, we want to graph y equals f of x log x base 3. And uh, we are going to rewrite this as 3 to the power of y equals x. If it makes it easier, class, you can rewrite it in the following manner. Log x base 3 equals y. And then you look at this here. And obviously, we're going to pick y first. It's a lot easier. So for example, if I pick negative 3, 3 to the power of negative 3 is 1 over 27. Negative 2, 1 over 9. Negative 1, 1 third. 0, 1. If I pick 1, I get 3. If I pick 2, I get 3 squared or 9. 3, I get 27. So again, very carefully, if you graph it, you get this function and we are showing three to the power of x also and they are symmetric with respect to the line y equals x because the two functions are inverse functions. What is log ad1 to the base three? In other words, 3 raised to what power yields AD1? Why don't we just call it something, x, y, z, you choose a variable. We call it y. x, n, anything you want. And let's do the arrow thing. 3 to the power of y is AD1. You know AD1 is 3 to the power of 4, so y must be 4. So it's very straightforward, everybody. What about log base 2 of 1 over 8? We don't know. We set it equal to x or y or z or m, any variable of your choice. We go with the arrow thing again. It means 2 to the power of x is 1 over 8. And you know a is 2 cubed comes up becomes 2 to the power of negative 3. They have the same base. They must have the same exponent. x becomes negative 3. Determine the domain of a logarithmic function. The domain in short, if you remember, we said x is larger than zero. So the argument of log must be positive, larger than zero. That's all. So x is larger than two. And therefore, two to infinity is the answer. What about this case? The same thing. The argument must be larger than zero. At the same time, you're dealing with a fraction, the denominator can't be zero. So x minus one can't be zero, that means x can't be one. So how do we determine that? We go with the sine graph. We have a number line from negative to positive infinity. If you set the top equal to zero, x becomes negative three. If you set the bottom equal to zero, you get one. Those are giving us sub intervals. And we write it in this fashion. And by the way, we are going to call this g of x. Okay, so we're gonna let this one be 
g of x, so we know what we have done. Now, at negative 3, this expression is 0. At 1, this expression is undefined. U, D, undefined. So, all you have to do, pick up it is. And by the way, they will alternate because the degree for the numerator is odd is 1. The degree for the denominator, x minus 1, is odd. I mean, x minus 1 to the power of 1, x plus 3 to the power of 1. So you pick a test point, tp for short. Over here would be minus 4. Between negative and positive, 0. Over here, you to go to, uh, you go to 2. And the easiest one is 0. If I plug in 0, I get positive 3 over negative 1, which makes it negative. They alternate. But as I said, if you have that, put negative 4. You get negative, and then the negative, Negative over negative is positive. Put two, two and three, five, two minus one is one, so positive. So what we want is positive. So here and here. Here means from negative infinity to negative three. Here means from one to infinity, okay? Now, we don't have a equality. So minus infinity to negative three, both of them take parentheses, union one to infinity, the same thing. So. Even if it did not mention that, it happened to be the case because it's uh, larger, okay? And so one to infinity, the answer is negative infinity to negative three union one to infinity. What about this one? Log base two of x minus one. Remember, this must be positive. In fact, you may recognize that this is always positive, with one exception. When x is 1, it's 0. So that's really the only one that you exclude. Class, this absolute value is larger than 0, always, except when it becomes 0. So you may there are two ways to do this. You may recognize, OK, x minus 1 equals 0, x equals 1. And this is something that you are going to exclude. Or you say x minus 1 less than 0 or x minus 1 larger than 0, and you get this one. The bottom line is all real numbers are fine except 1. Because 1 is the only one that makes this 0. And remember, the argument of log must be positive, everybody. Example set. The function p equals 95 minus 30 log x base 2 models the percent p of students who recall the important features of a classroom lecture over time. It's good for every student to know. Where x is the number of days that have elapsed since the lecture was given. What percent of the students recall the important features of a lecture eight days after it was given. So basically, we use this one and we let x be eight. That's the idea. Plug in eight, that's all. Now, I hope you know by now that log eight base two is three. Right, because two cubed is eight. So you plug in, this is 90 and you get five. What does it mean? Only 5% of the students remember the important features of a lecture eight days after it's given. Of course, if we study, that won't be the case. Natural exponential and natural logarithmic functions. We've already discussed the base E, the natural base E. So recall the natural base E is an irrational number that serves as the basis for the natural exponential function and the natural logarithmic function. E is almost 2.7182. It continues indefinitely. It's an irrational number.
the natural exponential function f of x equals e to the power of x, where e is the natural base. Natural logs or Napierian log in honor of John Napier, who first discovered logs, are logs with a base of e, the natural base. Log x base e, we write it as ln x. The moment we use ln, we should recognize the base is e. So the natural log of x, f of x is ln x, and of course, x must be positive, as always, because that's the argument of log must be positive. Natural log y equals ln x, x is e to the power of y, x is larger than zero. This is y equals e to the power of x, this is y equals ln x, the two functions are inverse functions. They both have the same base, namely e. Common log. When the base is 10, we call it common log. So log x to the base 10, we just don't write the base. If you don't see the base and just log, that means the base is 10. So, so y equals log x, that means x equals 10 to the power of y. Again, x is larger than zero. So y equals 10 to the power of x versus y equals log x. The two are inverse functions. And as I've mentioned before, when A is positive, they look similar, but the larger the base, the closer to the y-axis. And for the log, the larger the base, the closer to the x-axis, okay? Let's graph f of x equals negative ln of x minus two, find its domain range asymptotes, find f inverse of x and use it to find the range of f. We start with uh, the basic function y equals ln x or y equals log x with any base that is larger than one looks similar to this. And of course, we know the x-intercept is located at one zero. So we start with uh, y equals minus ln x, which means reflected about the uh, x-axis. So when you put a negative in front, the, in essence, the y becomes negative. So this flips over, this flips over. Becomes like that. As it flips over, what happens to this point? That remains in the same spot. Then x minus two occurs. That means we are going to move it to the right by two units. So when you move this to the right by two units, the the vertical asymptote, which is the y-axis, which is x equal to zero, moves to the right. If you set this equal to zero, x minus two equal to zero, x equals two, that gives you the vertical asymptote, by the way. Let me just write that. If you set this one equal to zero, that means VA is x equals two. So it shifts it to the right by two units. So the vertical asymptote shifts, and this one shifts to the right as well. So it's one over E, this is the exact answer, plus two, okay? One over E plus two comma one, uh, one zero becomes three zero, and your um, vertical asymptote changes to x equals two. 
So what do we have? This is the location of the new asymptote. And this is the location of a new x-intercept. So x-intercept located at 3, 0. Y-intercept, we don't have any. Domain. It was 0 to infinity here and here, but now it has changed, and it has changed from 2 to infinity. The range was all real numbers, all real numbers, all real numbers. They haven't changed. Vertical asymptote was the y-axis, which had the equation x equal to 0 in both cases here. But here now it's x equals to. So domain from 2 to infinity, range from negative infinity to infinity, VA or vertical asymptote, x equals to. So to find the vertical asymptote, set this equal to 0, and you can find the answer. So we got everything. We want to find the inverse. Let's go through the process of finding the inverse. So uh, f of x is negative ln x minus 2. And uh, if we change this f of x to y, it makes it easier to work. interchange x and y, this becomes x, this becomes y. I can move the negative to the other side, or I can say multiply both sides by negative sign. It uh, has the same effect. And now that I have it in this format, I'm going to go to the definition. e to the power of minus x, according to this definition. Remember, we don't write the base, but if we did, let's just do it this way. So you see, we don't write the base. Let's say it's that. So look at this arrow. Okay. So to, to see how to make that change, it is not a bad idea that you do it this way. But remember, it's very important not to have the base E because you should know the base E is already there. Okay. I hope everybody remembers that. This is important. Okay. And so now we want to solve for Y. We move the negative to And we change the name to f inverse. So y or f inverse of x is e to the power minus x plus 2. So given y or f of x equals minus ln of x minus 2, its inverse is e to the power minus x plus 2. Here's the graph from the previous page. Recall, when f of x is minus ln x minus 2, x-intercept is 3, 0, y-intercept is a non-existent thing, right? For its inverse, x-intercept is none, and now the y-intercept becomes 0, 3. Recall. Let me erase this. For the function f of x equals minus ln, x, ln, of, ln of x minus 2, domain was from 2 to infinity. Range was all real numbers. Vertical asymptote x equals 2. Let's see how it translates for this guy. According to this, 
if the domain is due to to infinity, for this one, range must be two to infinity. If the range is negative to positive infinity, the domain for this function must be negative to positive infinity. If the vertical asymptote is x equals two, for this function, the horizontal asymptote is y equals two. So that's what we get. So it's uh, pretty straightforward, everybody. And here's the graph. So this function was graphed on the previous page. And look, the x equals to now y equals to the x-intercept of 3, 0, the y-intercept of 0, 3. And of course, they are inverse functions, though, so they are symmetric with respect to the line y equals 6. And by the way, if there is an a, there's a point of intersection, the point of intersection always happens on y equals x because we are interchanging x and y. Graph f of x equals three log x minus one, and its domain range asymptote find f inverse of x and use it to find the range of f. We start with the basic function. It is supposed to look something like that. By the way, when we don't have a base, the base is 10. Remember that it's a common log. So if we start with x minus 1, log of x minus 1, that means the same thing, but you move it to the right by one unit. And this is, of course, 1, 0. This is 10, 1. So we're going to move everything to the right by one unit. So what happens? One zero becomes two zero. Ten what becomes eleven. Your vertical asymptote was the y axis or x equal to zero. Now it's x equals one. <laughs> and now we're going to stretch it by a factor of three in a vertical direction, which means this doesn't change because zero times three is the same thing, but one times three becomes three, 11, one becomes 11, three. So that's what happens. So it's a, for this one, we don't see much of a uh, change, but uh, for this one, we'll see. All right, so uh, what are the uh, intercepts? We have the x-intercept of two, zero, no y-intercept. What about domain? Domain, it was zero to infinity. Now, because of this shift, if you set this equal to zero, it goes from one to infinity. The range hasn't changed in all three cases. It's all real numbers. The vertical asymptote was x equal to zero, and now it's x equals one. Again, if you set this one equal to zero, it gives you the vertical asymptote x equals one. Okay, everybody. Let's find F inverse. So F of X is three log X minus one. We want to find F inverse and we start by calling it Y instead of F of X. So Y is three log X minus one. 
we're going to interchange x and y. This becomes x, this becomes y. Right here, we have the inverse, everybody. However, we are going to solve for y. So first we're going to divide by number three. Then let me put x over three on this side so you can see the arrow. Okay, everybody. When we don't have a base with LOG, the base is 10. So the missing base, we should know it's 10. 10 to the power of x over 3 is y minus 1. I hope everybody can see that. It's very important that we recognize that. All right, so y is what? Move it and call it f inverse. So given f of x equals three log x minus one, f inverse is 10 to the power of x third plus one. And we remember the x-intercept was 2, 0. The y-intercept was none for that, which means the for this function, there is no x-intercept. The y-intercept is 0, 2. That's the meaning of it. So this was the graph, by the way. Domain was 1 to infinity, so now the range is 1 to infinity. Range was negative to positive infinity, now the domain is negative to positive infinity. We had a vertical asymptote, x equals 1. Now we have a horizontal asymptote, y equals 1. And if you graph it, it looks like that. So... Two zero zero two, the vertical asymptote versus the horizontal asymptote, and they're symmetric with respect to the line y equals x. Solve logarithmic equations. To solve, solve logarithmic equations, if you have a log on one side and a number on the other side, you just go with the definition. Two x plus one is two cubed, or two cubed is equal to two x plus one. As you know, two cubed is eight. Uh, subtract one. Divide by two, and you're done. Uh, you can always check. One thing I want to make a point of, one easy way to check, make sure the argument when you plug in is positive. So two times seven halves is seven, and one is eight. So that's good enough. But if you actually work it out, eight log eight base two, you know it's three. But more importantly, make sure the argument remains positive. Part B, we do exactly the same thing. A 
x cubed is 343 on the one hand. On the other hand, we may recognize this as seven cubed if they have the same exponent, they must have the same base. X becomes seven. Two e to the power of three x equals six. First, let's get rid of the two. Now, you can go to the definition, or you can take the natural log of both sides. Either way, 3x is ln3. You can go to the definition. The relationship between a logarithmic format and an exponential format. So according to this, This is the answer. And please understand, this is the exact answer, and you should always write the exact. Then if they ask you for the approximation, you use a calculator, this is an approximation class. We always want the exact, unless otherwise mentioned. At the very least, even if you go to a decimal representation, write the exact answer as well. Example 11, according to scientific research, the percent of the course that one remembers after the conclusion of the course is approximated by the equation R of t equals 85 minus 41.9 log of t plus one or t being between zero and 48. This is 48 months, okay. Find the percentage of the course that one will remember after 10 months, 25 months. So basically what it says, replace the t in this equation with 10 for part b for 20, that's all. So r of 10 is 85 minus 41.9 log of 10 and one, which is log of 11. Now, of course, you have to put this into a calculator. This one is class log 11. You put it into a calculator, you multiply it by 41.9, you subtract it from 85, and it gives you 41.3656. I, I used a lot of decimals. So after 10 months, only 41% or so will be remembered. After 25 months, we are going to replace this T with 25, and that means... log of 26, you put it into a calculator times 41.9 minus, subtract it from 85, 25.7126. Almost 26% will be remembered. Okay. So a student may remember that much. That's why uh, you then want to continue studying and refreshing your memory, especially for a course like a math course that we need it. We need the prior knowledge of mathematics. I picked those questions, this question on purpose, just to make a point. Another application is a pH in <clears throat> science, in uh, chemistry. The pH, another application of logs. The pH represents the measure of acidity and alkalinity of a solution. A number between zero and seven indicates acidity. Lower numbers indicate stronger acidity. A number between seven and 14 indicates alkalinity. Higher number indicates stronger alkalinity. According to this scale, a value of seven represents 
neutrality like water. It is roughly the negative of the log to base 10. Negative of the log to base 10. Of the molar acceleration measured in units of moles per liter of hydrogen ion, also known as hydronium ion concentration. So we can use pH equals minus log H3O plus, or for short, they use H plus. So a molecule of water has been added to a hydrogen atom and has created H3O plus. Find the pH of a solution whose hydronium ion concentration is 2.8 times 10 to the power of negative three. Now, this was an explanation about what this means, but the process is very simple. Just all you have to do, <clears throat> replace this with the number that is given. Now, honestly, you have to put this into a calculator to figure it out, okay? However, if you don't have a calculator and the question is don't use a calculator, just tell us if it's going to be acidic or not based on the numbers between zero and 14. So you decide if it's less than seven or larger than seven. That you can do by cutting this into two pieces, which will be discussed in the next section with more details, that's properties of logs. However, you've seen it in previous courses. So it's the log of this and the log of that. You keep the negative out. Now, log of 2.8 and log of 10 to the power of minus three. This becomes negative three. That's logarithmic properties. Logarithmic properties. So log 2.8 minus three. And it's important to know that because we're talking about 10 as the base, everybody, log one is zero, log 10 is one, and this is somewhere between zero and one. With negative three, and then times negative, we get minus log 2.8 plus three. This number is a little bit less than three which definitely is less than seven and definitely it's acidic. If you put it into a calculator, you get 2.55.